Okay, I think we are live. Hello, everyone who is already here. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I am actually live. Oops, wrong channel. Okay, yes, we are live. How is everyone doing? I see we have JNR, perfect on my drive home from traffic, awesome. Okay, so this video, basically what we're going to be doing is going through the real estate sectors um, or the REIT industry using stock on a locks screener. Um, I actually did this last night. I was playing around with the screener for like an hour and I went through literally hundreds of REITs and I believe that I found some of the best and I am going to share the watch list that I made. And we're just going to go through some REITs really quickly because this was something that a lot of people in our last live stream really wanted to see and um, analyze. So let's just dive right into it. And I'm going to make this video with the intention of posting it to our YouTube channel, um, cutting it up and, you know, making actual content with it in, in addition to just a live stream. So let's see how this goes. It's the first time we're going to try that. So with that being said, let's just share the screen. And we're going to head over here. Nice. Want more REITs? Only own Granite. Yeah, I own Granite and uh, Dream. So this should be interesting. All right. So this is the stock on a lock screener right here. I hope you guys can see my screen. And as I said, I went through the entire real estate industry yesterday on the US and Canadian exchanges. So what I did is I just went like this. I went to the real estate industry right here and I tried to find the best REITs that I possibly could using our new stock on the lock screener. As you can see down here, there's literally 800 stocks. I went through all of them. And then I made this watch list right here. Um, where is it? REITs, which I will share with everyone. But there are 29 in this watch list now. So I found 29 promising REITs last night using our screener, which was awesome. So um, I haven't actually done research on <laughs> what all of these REITs are or what they do in specific. So that's what we're going to do in this live stream is start going through this list and trying to figure out, you know, which one of these are actually the best. So, yeah, as I said, it's going to be more of a research video and we're just going to see what happens. So let's get into it. All right. So the first thing that I want to do, I want to see which ones are the I actually don't want DLR in this list. So I'm going to remove DLR and I actually want to find the smallest market cap ones first. So right here, we can see that the smallest market cap that I found was at about $53 million in market cap. So let's go and take a look at this one. This one is self storage, global self storage. The ticker is S E L F. I'm literally the only person on stock on a lock watching the stock right now. So it's pretty unknown. It looks like. If we take a look here, in 2009, this was a $2 stock. It pays a 5.6% dividend right now if we compare it to the SPY. Okay, so it looks like the SPY is massively outperforming this stock. Okay, so right away, this stock is not outperforming the SPY at all. But let's take a look at the past couple of years. So now let's compare. Okay, so over the past... Two and a half years, it looks like this stock has kind of been keeping up with the SPY ish. Not really. So, okay. Small cap, not keeping up with the SPY. The reason that I added this one to my watch list initially, though, was because the price to FFO right here was only 12.72, which means that the stock has an FFO yield of nearly 8%. So, if the company wanted to actually pay out 100% of its FFO, then it could pay out a nearly 8% dividend. And I do like the fact that it is a small cap because I do like to invest in small caps once in a while. Now, if we take a look at the revenue, revenue in the last quarter was only $3 million. And it looks like revenue is not really growing. It's grown by like 7% over the past year. So that's interesting. Okay, Global Self Storage operates as a real estate investment trust. The company is headquartered in Millbrook, New York, currently employs 28 full-time employees. Um, acquires and redevelops self-storage properties, stores or properties. Cool. So that is what the business does. They're self-storage, which makes sense because the ticker symbol is self. And uh, again, they got that nice um, high dividend. Now, with a small cap like this, 
One thing I really like to do is take a look at what the insiders are doing. Um, I like to take a look at the insider ownership and see if they're buying. And what I noticed here is that the CEO is buying and they recently bought, I believe that this was like August 23rd, $29,000 of shares. CEO also bought here on May 20th. And then in 2021, another insider was buying. So there is insider buying, but not a lot, but it's still nice to see insiders are buying. And then we can see the CEO also owns 2% of the company, about a million dollars worth. Okay, now let's take a look at the financials. So right here, we can see that quarterly revenue is continuing to grow basically every single quarter. Trailing 12 months revenue is now sitting at 11.3 million. Okay, what's the cash flow? Operating cash flow is now $4 million in the trailing 12 months, and it's growing. So that's nice to see too. Quarterly, last quarter was an all-time high. Okay, um, balance sheet. $67 million in assets, liabilities, $20 million. So shareholder equity is $48 million. Interesting, okay. So this thing is almost selling your book value. Yes, yeah, 1.1 of book value, FFO yield of 7.86. Let's take a look at how it's been valued historically. So I'll do price to operating cash flow. I like to use operating cash flow for REITs. And we don't have a lot of history here. So it's it's actually selling right near its lowest. The lowest it sold for was in 2019, 12.5. Now it's selling for 12.7. Okay. So it's definitely selling below its averages. This is actually an interesting REIT, okay? So it is a small cap, but the self storage facility, or sorry, the self storage um, REIT industry has been growing like super well. And um, we might take a look at some more REITs later on in this video. And yeah, it's a small self storage company that's growing revenue every single quarter. It's operating cash flow is growing. The price ratio is not insane. Insiders are buying more shares. So I'm going to leave that one on the watch list. Um, what I would do is take a deeper look into like, okay, what are their tenants? Um, you know, like what is this company's investor presentation look like? Learn more about the business. But right away, there's not a lot of red flags popping up for me with self. So I'm going to keep that one on the watch list. And let's see what the chat is saying here. Oh, hey, Jake. JNR, no, these are not all Canadian REITs. Please share REITs for TSX also. Wow, Daniel, that's a big list. Can you share this watch list with the public? Yeah, I can. It's a big list. There's 29 stocks on it right now. As I said, I I went through about 800 REITs last night in our stock unlock screener that's in development. And um, yeah, these were the best ones that I could possibly find. And yeah, that first one that we just took a look at, Self right there, it was pretty solid. Like honestly, it was pretty solid. So let's share the screen again. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so we just looked at Self. The next one is Pine. I've already taken a look at Pine on my own, though. Um, here's one, actually. I saw that someone wanted to take a look. I believe it was VJ wanted to take a look at a TSX REIT. And I did take a look at TSX REITs. So this one is Storage Vault Canada. Um, take a look at this, all right? We're going to compare this to the SPY. So over the past, since 2008, so over the past 14 years, self, what is it? Storage Vault Canada is up about 1,700% versus the SPY's 156%. Actually, it's up over 2,000%. So this REIT right here, it's it was a smaller cap. It's kind of like a mid cap now at 2.5 billion. But this REIT right here has massively, massively outperformed the market. And this REIT is another self-storage REIT. However, the reason why I am not in love with this REIT is because it's always, well, it's not always been expensive, but right now I think it is expensive. The price to FFO is sitting at 36.2, which is very high because the FFO yield then is only about 2.8%. When you compare that to bond yields, um, you know, you could go and buy a bond and get a 4% yield right now, which is much higher than what this business is offering, which means that investors who are buying shares in this business right now are actually paying a premium for risk by owning a stock and not owning just, you know, a guaranteed government bond. Now, we can see that the financials of this business have been growing, though. What was it? In 2020, they produced 155 million in revenue. 2021 was 208 million. So they grew revenue like 20% year over year. 
If we take a look here, the company operates and rents self-storage and portable storage space to individual and con commercial customers. So yeah, they're a self-storage company. And actually, I've seen this Storage Vault Canada. I've seen um, their self-storage facilities in Calgary, and they're popping up all over the place. So they're definitely expanding. And um, yeah, it's, it's a really fast-growing company, but I just am not in love with the price. They've done $237 million in the trailing 12 months now. Operating cash flow in the trailing 12 months is about 70.5 million. And um, yeah, I'm just not in love with that price. But in terms of how the stock has performed historically, it's been absolutely nuts. A very, very good stock for whoever's owned it. Um, so that's that's one of the TSX ones. That's the reason I'm not buying it, but it does look super strong. So let's take a look at, I'm just going to go check the chat really quick. Yeah, Jake, I, I checked over 800 last night. Well, with the screener, it's super quick to check REITs, man. It's really quick. I'm sad Jake's not on the live stream, by the way. Okay, the next one. Let's take a look at Pine. So this is where it's hard for me because self-storage, or sorry, storage vault right there, I think it's expensive, but the company is so, it's growing so well. And it's just like very consistently growing. It's outperforming the SPY so much but it's just expensive right now. So like, do I leave it on the watch list? Do I not leave it on the watch list? I'll just add a note right here. I'll add a note for everyone. This stock is too expensive for me right now. Leaving it on though. No. Perfect. What would my buy target be? I don't know. I'll have to figure that out later. But I'll add that note. This one, I'll add a note right here. Self is a small cap self storage REIT. Um, what did we say? Selling for a 12 price to FFO right now. And, and has a dividend of near 6% with insiders buying more. Yeah. So we got the notes right there. Now let's go and take a look at Pine. I already clicked that. Nice, Daniel. Okay, so this one has an insight score of 4.08 out of 5, which is pretty good. Um, dividend right now is about 6%. The price to FFO is only 10. The FFO yield is about 10%. So again, if this company wanted to pay out 100% of its FFO, then it could pay out a near 10% dividend yield right now. And um, the reason that I'm taking a look at REITs, by the way, is because the REITs have been destroyed in the market this year. Like the majority of them are down 20 plus percent. So I think that if we can find good REITs, then there could be really good opportunities in the real estate sector right now. And we were talking about that in our previous live stream, which is what spawned this entire video. Now, it looks like Pine hit the public stock market in 2019. And since then, the stock has actually made no gains. So it hit the stock market in November of 2019. And then like three months later, the stock market crashed. So that was a pretty bad time to enter the stock market. But uh, yeah, it looks like the stock has not recovered Um to its 2020 highs of $19.50, which is interesting. It does have a very nice dividend right now. It is a smaller cap at 220 million as well. So it is on the smaller cap side. If we take a look at revenue, and the most recent quarter revenue is only $11.5 million. What is this real sorry, what does this REIT do? Which owns operates a portfolio of single tenant commercial properties. Okay, so commercial properties. All right, let's take a look at the financials, income statement quarterly revenue. So quarterly revenue, revenue is sitting at an all time high right now. It's continuing to grow in the trailing 12 months. It now has $43 million of revenue. You guys can see right here, revenue is growing very nice. Take a look at cash flow, cash flow, same thing here. Cash flow is growing very nicely in the most recent quarter record at $22 million. What are insiders doing? Okay. So Wow, this insider right here, it looks like this is a company, CTO Realty Growth, purchased shares on October 24th, 4th, 21st, 20th, 19th, 18th, 17th, 14th, 13th, 12th, 11th. Um, so this other company is investing in Pine massively right now. Wow, it's like just consistently buying, consistently buying. Oh my goodness. Okay, so yeah, there is, what is that? 
there is six pages of this company, CTO Realty, buying shares in Pine Realty. That's a lot. And they're consistently buying. So let's take a look here. Realty Growth owns 8% of the company and they're buying more. Interesting. Okay, cool. What are the dividends doing on the stock? So the dividend per share is also growing. Um, it looks like it's grown... Ah, we can't because it's not long enough. Okay, but the dividend per share looks like it's grown by about, I want to say 15% over the past year. So they're growing the dividend as well. Looks like the most recent dividend also grew slightly. Nice to see. Okay. Um, what's the balance sheet like? Assets, 566 million. Liabilities, 331 million. Shareholder equity, 234 million. So this stock is selling below book value then. Yep, price to book, 0 0.94. Cool. Okay. So this is another REIT right here that looks like at face value, it has pretty strong fundamentals. The revenue is growing every single quarter. Recent quarter was a record for revenue. Um, operating cash flow is growing every single quarter. Recent quarter was also a record. FFO looks like it's growing. F price to FFO is only 10. FFO yield is 10. And there is an insider consistently buying shares in this business. So I'm going to leave this one on the watch list as well. I definitely think there's more research to do into the actual business, but just on a fundamental basis, the balance sheet looks good. Um, everything honestly looks pretty good with Pine. Everything looks great with Pine. It's two FFO is 10, 10% FFO yield, 6% dividend and growing. Another company is buying tons of shares like every day. So we'll add that to the notes right there. Okay. Next one, NCLP. JNR says Pine and Dream were the most interesting REITs I could find and I like the yields. Cool. Yeah, I think Dream actually reports earnings today, and uh, I cannot wait to go through the earnings. They usually report later on in the day, though, and I believe that Dream is on this watch list right here as well. But we're going to go and take a look now at NLCP, New Lake Capital Partners. This REIT looks like it hit the market in 2021, and ever since then has been coming down. It's actually down about 40, basically 50% from its IPO. Market cap is about $324 million. A 10% dividend though, wow. FFO yield is 10% as well. So they're almost paying out 100% of their FFO as a dividend to shareholders, but the FFO does cover the dividend. So as long as the FFO doesn't go down, then the dividend should remain intact. Revenue looks like it's growing. What does the company do? Through sale, leaseback transactions, third-party purchases, funding suit projects, the company is headquartered in Connecticut. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> oh, wait a second. Sorry. Provides real estate capital to state licensed cannabis operators through sale leasebacks. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So the revenue is growing. It's cash flow growing. Cash flow in the trailing 12 months is growing. But I don't really like these cannabis REITs right now because basically they lease facilities to cannabis companies and like every cannabis company right now is losing tons of money so if their tenants essentially are losing money then it means well how stable is the cash flow how stable is the revenue like sure the revenue is growing but if their tenants are running out of cash how long can that last for so for me i'm probably gonna remove this one uh, just makes me uncomfortable. I would not feel comfortable having this on the watch list because I think it's a very high risk. Even though the dividend's high, even though the price ratio looks nice, the insight score is awesome, fundamentals are growing. I don't know if that's going to remain forever. So yeah, that one's coming off the watch list. All right, AFC Gamma. What is this one? Six people watch this one. 13% dividend. Wow. FFO yield 5% though. What? Insight score 4.24. Okay, what's going on with the share price actually? Um, it looks like it hit the market in 2021 as well. It is now down about 25%. It's a very high dividend. 
All right, what's going on with this one? Commercial real estate finance at Hickory and Wells Palm. Company went IPO, institutional lender to the cannabis industry. So this is another cannabis REIT, essentially, okay? All right, let's take a look at the financials because I imagine everything is going to be growing because it's got a very nice insight score. So let's take a look. Yep, quarterly revenue is growing. All-time high revenue in the most recent quarter. Cash flow looks like it grew all-time high in the most recent quarter. But again, I am not optimistic that this is stable. What are insiders doing, actually? Really? Okay, insiders are buying more. CEO bought $80,000 worth. Head of real estate bought $900,000 worth. And this is all in uh, 2020, basically. So insiders are actually buying a lot of shares. Oh, man, I just wish... That's tough. Another thing I don't like about this, by the way, is, all right, check this out. The dividend yield is 13%, right? The FFO yield is 5%. What that means is the FFO payout ratio is 170%. And the, F, the organic FFO cannot actually cover the dividend payments, if I'm reading this correctly. Which means that the dividend is very high risk. Let's take a look at the financials really quick. Dividends paid. Yeah. So it looks like the cash flows are not actually covering this dividend. So I would be super skeptical of this dividend. Financials, revenues growing, cash flows growing. I just don't trust that dividend. I'm going to have to remove this one from the watch list. I'm going to add this to interesting small caps because it is interesting, but I'm not going to add that to the REIT watch list. All right, next. MI.UN. This is another TSX one. I'm going to check the comments though. Um, A, just got here IIPR2. It's a cannabis REIT. Yeah, um, yeah. There's another one at PW. A lot of these cannabis REITs came to the stock market recently and like have been growing super quick. But as I said, the the their tenants are not making money. And if their tenants are not making money, then how are they going to continue collecting their rent? And how are they going to continue per, per, sorry, producing cash flows to pay out the dividends? I actually was reading that. I think it was PW. One of their largest tenants went bankrupt or something like that recently. And take a look at this. This is this is the risk, right? This is a cannabis REIT right here as well. And their tenants, I believe, started going bankrupt. This thing was growing like crazy, okay? From 2019 to 2022, in three years, this stock was up 1,200%, okay? That's a massive growth. Then their tenants started going bankrupt, started going under, and now the stock is down 88% from its all-time highs. It's lost all of its gains pretty much almost all of its gains in the past year alone in the past few months actually the past like nine months so this is the risk with these can sorry this is the risk with these cannabis REITs is their tenants don't make money so as soon as they start going under this is what can happen and it's very high risk so yeah that's why i i'm hesitant to leave those ones on a watch list that i'm going to be sharing publicly because i do think that they are a little bit more high risk. Now, this one, mi.un.to, insight score four. If we take a look, this stock hit the market in 2018. It's actually lost money. It had a huge run up in 2019, 70% run, and now it's all the way down. Um, 3.5% dividend, price to FFO of only seven, FFO yield of 14.5%. That's pretty freaking good. Um, revenue looks like it didn't really grow though from it actually declined from 2020 to 2021 in the most recent quarters revenue has been slightly growing real estate investment trust engages in the operation of multi-residential rental properties in toronto ottawa canada sorry montreal calgary and edmonton okay interesting so they have multi-residential real estate Okay, so in the most recent quarter, we can see that the revenue had this big jump right here. What did that look like for cash flow? Okay, rev cash flow has been weird. What the heck is going on here? Okay, so cash flows is not really following revenues, which means that the operating cash flow margin is not really following revenues. So yeah, okay. Um, I'm not really seeing like, hmm. I mean, the price ratio is attractive, okay. 6.9 price ratio. FFO yield of 15%, but the revenue hasn't really been growing. 
It's not really growing. Hmm. <laughs> Growth, book value increasing. Hmm. Hmm. I don't love this one. I'm going to remove it from the watch list. I just don't love it. I don't feel comfortable with it. Okay. What do you guys think of BMW? I would like to have your quick take on MPW. As I mentioned previously, doing some research, MPW is yielding. Oh my goodness, I wasn't sharing my screen. I am so sorry. I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> Basically, what I just saw was a company with a high price. Sorry, it had a low priced FFO, a high FFO yield, but the revenue wasn't growing, cash flows weren't growing, and it, it basically just looked like it, it was stagnant and the stock price um, was falling, essentially. It was producing no returns. All right, so MPW, R Rajesh, <laughs> sorry, Jake, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, MPW is an interesting one. There is someone in my personal Discord, his name is Ollie. And he was saying that one of MPW's largest tenants is um like about to go under. So MPW has a lot of risk, I think. And also check this out. If we head over, I'm going to share my screen now. So if we head over to MPW, and we go to the insider trading, there's a lot of insider selling, and they're selling a lot. So CFO right here, six thousand, sorry, six million dollar sell, thirteen percent of his shares. Um, chairman of the board, president and CEO, thirteen million dollar sell. Chairman of the board, president, CEO, fifteen million dollar sell. CFO basically six million dollar sell. CEO four point five million dollar sell, and they have been selling. Well, like recently too. So I don't know why there is so much insider selling going on. And also, again, I think, well, basically someone that I trust a lot basically told me don't buy this stock. <laughs> it wasn't financial advice, but he was like, the yield is very high, but the stock is very risky. And yeah, he was he was basically just like, you should just avoid it. He did a lot of research on it and he's someone I really trust. So personally, I am not going to be buying it and I am not going to be adding it to um, the watch list. Now, with that being said, we need to go back to the REITs watch list. And we are going to take a look now at, we already took a look at this one. This one is a cannabis REIT. You know what? No, I'm going to remove this. After taking a look at PW, I'm going to remove this one. I just can't put these on here. They're, I think they're too high risk. Okay. We're going to sort from the market cap like this again. NCLP, New Lake Partners. That was another cannabis REIT. We're going to remove that one. Um, okay. Also going to remove this one. All right. Safe. Safe Hold Inc. Okay. So this one hit the market in 2017. Ran up 370%. And then in 2021, looks like it peaked out, and now it has fallen about 70%. Okay, dividend yield of 2.3%, price to FFO of 25, FFO yield of 4%. So this is a more expensive REIT right here, Safehold Inc. Um, the dividend yield is also not super high, so it looks like they're not focused that much on paying a dividend. Revenue is growing strong, though. Wow. Okay, what does this company do? Real estate investment trust, which focuses on acquiring, owning, owning, managing, capitalizing ground leases. Okay. Has a portfolio of diversified by property type and region. Companies' portfolios comprise of ground leases and master lease relating to five hotel assets that it refers to as Park Hotels Portfolio. It's property. Okay. So it looks like it owns. Oh, wow. They even have their. Uh, their address is right here. Okay, so it looks like it owns hotels in New York City, essentially. $1.82 billion company. Okay, take a look at the financials. Revenue has been growing very nicely. The most recent quarter was an all-time high. So yeah, you guys can see right here, the revenue is growing very strong. Like $65 million in revenue in the most recent quarter. 
last year revenue was 44 million. So they've grown revenue by like 50% year over year. And the trailing 12 months now at $225 million in revenue. Cash flow is also at an all time high right now of 73 million and it's growing. Let's take a look at what insiders are doing. Whoa. Okay. Istar Inc. purchased $200 million worth of shares. Wow. Okay. What? They own 68% of the company. This company right here. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So this one has a price to FFO on the higher end. The FFO yield is on the lower end. The dividend is also on the lower end. Um, it is selling below book value right now, but it owns and operates hotels in New York City, basically. So I don't know if I'm too bullish on hotels in New York City. I feel like that's not very diversified, you know? And I also don't love the price ratio, so I am actually going to take this one off the list. All right, let's refresh the list. No, that's the wrong list. Okay. Okay, we got Storage Vault. I'm going to leave that one on because it is growing quick. It's just expensive. Let's move on to the next one. Hello, welcome to the research of the best REITs. We're going to find the best REIT, everyone, okay? We are going to do it. We're going to find the best REITs that we can find on stock on a walk. All right, this is the next one right here. 4.7% dividend, FFO yield of 7%. Looks like it is growing its revenue. Manages existing logistics, building, developing new logistic assets, and securing land suitable for logistic development mm, in the United Kingdom. Okay, so this company is located in the United Kingdom, in the UK. Interesting. Okay, let's take a look at its financials. Is the revenue growing? The revenue is growing and is at an all time high. The cash flow is not at an all time high. Interesting. Can we see insider data on this one? Probably not because it's in the UK. It's also an OTC. So I don't know about this one either. Yeah, I'm going to remove this one. I don't know about that one. I'm not too bullish or optimistic on the UK right now for real estate. And I don't like that the cash flow is starting to come down. So I'm going to remove that one. Essential Properties Trust right here. This one looks like the next one. Got a very high stock unlock insight score, 4.3. Nice. Okay. Looks like it IPO'd in 2018. ES or sorry, EPRT right here. Had a massive run. An over 100% run from the end of 2018 to 2020. Then it absolutely collapsed. And then it had another massive run of over 100%. And now it's in about a 40% dip. What do we got here? 5% dividend. FFO yield of 6.7%. So the FFO covers the dividend, which is good. Quarterly revenue looks like it is growing. It's not growing super quick, but it is growing. What do they do? Engages in the acquisition and management of single tenant properties that are net leased on a long-term basis to middle market companies, which operate service-oriented or experience-based businesses. The company is headquartered in Princeton, New Jersey. Interesting. Okay. So another single tenant REIT right here. Um, quarterly revenue. Okay. So quarter over quarter, the revenue actually came down. Interesting. And the trailing 12 months revenue is at 277 million. Cash flow is at an all time high, but it has been coming down in the most recent quarter as well. It also looks like it significantly dropped in 2020. So that is definitely something to note is this company's cash flows look like they drop when there is like a recessionary period, which we saw at the beginning of 2020. 
Looks like it is starting to drop again right now. What are insiders doing? Insider transactions, CFO bought some shares, CEO bought some shares back in June. There was some selling in June as well. Um, some selling. So basically net selling, it looks like. Not very high insider ownership either. The CEO owns less than 1%. Okay. Hmm. I don't know about this one either. I don't know. Like the price to FFO is decent, but I'm not sure if I'm, hmm. Dividend per share is growing too. Hmm. You know what? We're looking for the best REITs, right? I'm going to have to remove it. I don't think this is one of the best REITs. Okay. Um, Maple Tree Industrial. What? Maple Tree Industrial Trust. Okay. What is this one? Two people watch it. IPO'd in 2012. Compare this to the SPY. So the SPY is outperforming at this stock quite substantially. It's got an 8.4% dividend right now. FFO yield is 8%. So right away, we can see that the FFO yield does not cover the dividend. So that dividend looks like it is at risk. Revenue is growing, though. Hmm. Actually, wait, what, where is this company located? Singapore. Okay, so this company has 86 properties in Singapore and 56 properties, sorry, 57 properties in North America. So it looks like it's actually a mostly Singapore REIT. Wow, look at that revenue growth recently, though. Holy smokes. Operating cash flow is topping out, though, and it came down recently. Okay. Interesting. Definitely interesting. Okay. What are the dividends looking like? Dividend growth also does not look consistent. Okay. It's not the best REIT, I don't think. We're going to remove it. Next one, TRNO. Three people watching this one. Whoa, look at that stock price appreciation. Okay, compare that to the SPY. Okay, so it's slightly underperforming the SPY, but if we go, the SPY is up 256%. If we go to the dividends tab. Okay, so including dividends, it's basically matched the SPY over the past, you know, what is that, 12 years. Dividend yield is only 3%. FFO yield 3.16%, really. So this one is more expensive. It's also not growing like incredibly well. Let's see, let's take a deeper look. Income statement, quarterly, revenue. It is growing. It did kind of grow nicely over the past year. Operating cash flow is coming down though, weird. What are insiders doing? Insiders are buying, hey? Well, in May, hmm. Hmm. This one is kind of interesting. Hmm. Okay. Let me just take a look at this. I got to refresh. Okay. So if we actually take a look at the past decade, the stock is outperforming this buy. We take a look at the past five years. It's also outperforming the SPY. Okay, I'm going to leave this one on the watch list because I want to do more digging into it. It is outperforming the SPY over the past 10 and five years. I don't know what's going on with that operating cash flow, though. Hmm, that's a question to ask. Okay. For this one, what was that? T-R-N-O. So I need to look into the operating cash flow more. 
and it has been outperforming the SPY over the past five and 10 years, and insiders have recently been buying. Okay. And then we have Granite right here. Granite is actually reporting soon. All right, let's take a look. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, take a look at the chat. What's going on? Um, at the end of the stream, are you going to recap and pick which ones are your favorites? Honestly, JNR, I don't know if I can get through that entire list in one stream, but I just kind of want to do some live stock analysis so that you guys can kind of see like, what is the thought process? Like kind of what do I do? How do I think about these stocks? What am I looking at? And basically how I come to my conclusions. Like I just want to explain my thinking as I'm looking at them. Why? Because I was going to go through this entire list of stocks anyways and do this on my own, but I could just record it live, you know, talk to you guys, and you can maybe learn something new and just come along for the ride. So that's what's happening. <laughs> what is your weekly live stream schedule like? I saw you do one on the weekend, but I'm not sure of the time. Yeah, exponential investing. Thank you for the question. So this is a random live stream. I just kind of was like, I'm going to research some REITs right now. And if people want to come and hang out, they can. And I'll show you exactly how I look at REITs and the uh, the ones that I found using our screener. We do go live every single Saturday at 1130 AM Eastern, though. That is on the schedule every Saturday. We do that. I do that with Jake and Nick, who are the co-founders of Stock Unlock. And yeah, every Saturday that one is scheduled. But this one was not scheduled. I just kind of... Uh, just kind of did it. Jake Ruth, yes. For the spies that are not beating, or sorry, for the REITs that are not beating the spy, you got to take a look at the dividend payments as well, which is what I just did in that most recent one. And when you take a look at the dividend payments, it was actually beating the spy. Kind of interesting, Lol. How long is a piece of string? What? Very useful info on REITs. I find it tough to analyze too. Yeah. They can be kind of tough to analyze. Um, I don't know about SLG. So the, the, the REITs that I'm taking a look at are the ones that I found using the stock on a lock screener. And I went through, as I said at the beginning of the stream, I went through 800 different REITs last night, spent like an hour and a half doing it. And um, I made a watch list that I will be sharing in this video and uh, in, in the description also. Um, but yeah, so I'm not really... I'm not really taking a look at, uh, you know, REITs that are being suggested right now. I'm trying to get through my watch list because I want to find the best REITs. And uh, so that's what we're doing right now. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again. I'm not going to forget to share my screen again. All right, here we go. The next one on our watch list is Granite REIT. Full disclosure, I actually own this REIT. This is an industrial REIT up in Canada. It's got a dividend right now at 4.4%, FFO yield of near 6%. And if we compare the stock to the SPY, I'm going to zoom into about 2000 and let's take a look at, where was it? Yeah, about 2010-ish. So over the past 12 years, Granite REIT is up about 402%. And when you include the dividend, this stock has massively, massively outperformed the SPY. If we take a look at the past five years, the, the stock price is slightly underperforming the SPY, but if we take into account the dividend, so right here we can see that the SPY is up 69% over the past five years. If we go and take a look at the dividends from 2017, including the dividends, this stock is up 96%. So it's actually outperformed the SPY by about 30% when we include the dividends. And this stock, including the dividends, historically has just like outperformed the SPY all the time. Again, it's an industrial REIT up in Canada. I own this one, and I believe that they report earnings soon. So yeah, I don't need to take a look at what this business does because I, I'm pretty pretty aware. But right here, if we take a look at the trailing 12 months revenue, um, we can see that really over the past decade, the revenue has been growing quite nicely, and the revenue really started growing in 2019. And in 2019, you can see that there was a clear trend change to the revenue growth, and it's just been consistently going up and up and up. This is kind of the same story for the operating cash flow. Operating cash flow has kind of been topping out a little bit recently. But if we go to the dividends that this stock pays, 
they have been consistently increasing the dividend like over the past decade. And they they increase the dividend basically like pretty much every year, I want to say. So the dividend yield is 4.4% right now. But as the business continues expanding, um, the dividend should continue growing. And this, this REIT right here does pay a monthly dividend as well, which is awesome to see. Now, if we head over to this website right here, this website is Quote Media. Um, and they have insider buying for Canadian stocks. And we can see right here that Granite REIT is buying back about 39,000 shares every single day almost. Like, take a look at that. So the company is also buying back shares right now on top of paying the dividend because the stock is in, if we take a look, the stock is in a, about a 30% correction from its all-time highs in 2021. I don't know why I can't do this right now. Yeah, it's in about a 33% correction from its all-time highs. So the, the business seems like it's fine. Insiders are also buying shares in this business. And um, the business seems fine. So while the stock is down, they're taking advantage of it. And they're buying back a lot of shares right now, which I love to see on top of that 4.4% dividend. So yeah, I own this one. I think it's going to continue growing over the long term. And they have a very nice diversified um, portfolio of industrial real estate. There is really a lot of REITs here. Hey, holy smokes. There's a lot of good REITs. Okay. Um, I want to take a look at... I want to take a look at this one, NSA. This one has a very high inside score. Okay. So right away, the insight score is 4.48 out of 5. That's very high. If we compare this to the SPY, it's massively outperformed the SPY over the past seven years. It's up 230% versus the SPY's 84%, and the stock pays a 5% dividend. What is the returns including the dividend? Oops. Returns including the dividend is 300%. So it's like almost quadrupled the SPY's returns over the past seven years. That's pretty That's pretty good. Pretty freaking awesome. If we take a look, revenue is growing. Cool, cool, cool. What do they do? The company is headquartered in Greenwood Village, Colorado. IPO operation, operation and acquisition of self storage properties. Okay, so this is another self storage REIT, which is interesting because the price to FFO right now is only thirteen, and self storage REITs like the self storage real estate industry is growing so quick, it's insane. And as we saw earlier with SBI.to, that's a Canadian self storage REIT. That one was selling for a price to FFO of like thirty six. And that's what I mean is these self-storage REITs are typically quite expensive in the market right now. So seeing what at a 13 price to FFO is pretty good. FFO yield is also 7.5%. And again, it has that 5% dividend. So we can see that the FFO yield does cover the dividend well, and it's not really, it's not really using the entire FFO. So, wow, look at that revenue growth. Oh my goodness, that's like every single quarter every single quarter basically there was a down quarter right here it grew its revenue through 2020 and then its revenue has been exploding wow that is a very very nice chart and the trailing 12 months revenue is now 710 million cash flow cash flow is growing very well and it looks like the company has grown cash flow every single quarter since 2014. That is really nice. Are insiders buying this? Like if I were an insider, I'd probably be buying this. Okay, CEO. Really? There's like no insider buying going on. What? What are you guys doing? This is a really attractive stock. All right, why is this stock attractive? It's been absolutely demolishing the S&P 500 at the same time as paying a 5% dividend. The price to FFO right now is not insane. It's 13.3. The FFO yield is high. It's 7.5%. It's grown its revenue basically every single quarter since 2014. 
its cash flows are growing basically every single quarter since 2014, and they're at an all-time high right now. Are the dividends growing too? And the dividends are growing. Oh my goodness. Dividends have grown by, dividends have doubled in the past five years. Oh my goodness. Okay. In 2015, dividend yield on cost is now 16%. So if you were buying this stock in 2015, your dividend yield on cost now is 15%. Yeah, this one is staying on the watch list. Wow. There we go. See that right there, everyone. That is a good rate. No, get out of here. Yeah, that was a really good read. NSA, that yield on cost is beautiful. You're absolutely right, Jake. Wow, yeah. That's the best read we've seen so far. Seriously, NSA. And the price isn't even insane right now. So definitely going to be diving into this one. I'm going to make a note right now on our... I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to make a note on our watch list. I'm going to say this REIT is incredible. High dividend yield. Dividend has grown 100% in five years. Um, insiders, I don't know why insiders aren't buying more of this. Like, what are they doing? What was the other things? Revenue grown every quarter. Same with operating cash flow. Price to FFO is 13. FFO yield of 7%. That is an awesome REIT right there. Definitely an awesome REIT. I'm going to take a look into that one, and I might have to end up buying that. That is incredible. Okay. Next one, Stag. Let's take a look. Okay, in 2011, it was worth $12. Let's compare it to the SPY. So the share price is not outperforming the SPY. But it does pay a high dividend. So if we go, the SPY is up 183%. If we go to the dividends, the stock, including dividends, is up 275%. So including dividends, this stock is, in fact, beating the SPY. Um, by how much? I think that was like, it's beating the SPY by about 80%. Okay. We got a dividend yield of 4.6%, FFO yield of 6.6%. This is an industrial real estate company. So like Granite Industrial. Revenue has been growing. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Company's located in Boston. It is a United States industrial REIT. Okay. Let's take a little bit of a deeper look at the financials here. Whoa. Whoa. I like that. Okay. In 2020, it does look like there was a little bit of a dip in revenue. They don't have any information all the way back in 2008. But this business has been growing revenue almost every single quarter. And if we take a look at the trailing 12 months, basically every single quarter since 2011. So for a decade in the trailing 12 months, this company has been able to grow its revenue. That is inc that's incredible. This is the exact same story with the operating cash flow. This is another very, very, very attractive REIT. What are insiders doing? Why are you selling? Honestly, whatever. If they want to take some cash off the table, that's fine. But look at that growth, man. Wow. Okay. Dividends. Are the dividends? I'm going to imagine the dividends are growing. Wow. The dividends are not really growing. What? Weird. I don't know why they're not growing the dividend. Hmm. What is with that? Weird. Okay. So I think that this is a very attractive REIT. The revenue is growing. I don't think that the price is insane. A price to FFO of 15. Again, I don't think is insane. FFO yield of 6.6%. Dividend of about 4.6%. But the dividend isn't really growing. I'm surprised that they're not growing the dividend. Um, 
What was I going to say? Yeah. Revenue has grown every single quarter. Operating cash flow has grown every single quarter. I don't think that this one is more attractive than NSA. I think that it's a nice stock. It's got great fundamentals, but I don't think it's better than NSA. So it um, unfortunately does not get me as excited as NSA. NSA is like the stock to beat right now for sure. I'll put some notes right here. I'll add. Great company, but not growing the dividend. Revenue and operating cash flow have grown every quarter almost. Again, no dividend growth. Price to FFO is 15 right now. Not bad. Okay, we are now on FR. Whoa. Okay, so right here in 2006, this was a $49 stock. It fell 95% to $2.50 in 2009. So the Great Recession basically killed this business. All right, ever since the Great Recession, though, let's take a look. Has it beat this buy? It has. It's up. Since 2011, the stock is up roughly 400% versus the SPY's 200%. So basically doubled the SPY's returns, which is nice to see. Um, dividend yield 2.5%, FFO yield 6.5%, price to FFO 15 So this one's priced like stag, basically. So what does this REIT do? Industrial properties. So it's another industrial REIT. So yeah, it's basically just like stag. It's got... Um, a very similar price as well. The dividend is not quite as high, so they don't pay out all of their FFO as a dividend. So Stag is probably a better income stock, but um, it's very similar to Stag so far. Let's take a look at the financials, revenue. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, so take a look at this. Stocks follow fundamentals very clearly. Take a look at this. So in 2008, $518 million in revenue. And then it fell all the way down. It lost more than, well, it lost about half of its revenue by 2010. And ever since then, it's been recovering and basically building itself back. Let's take a look at the cash flow, see if it's the same story. Weird. That is super weird. Cash flow is like unharmed. How, how, what? What is happening? What is happening with this stock? Okay, there was a weird spike right here. They randomly just had like $200 million in operating cash flow last quarter. So I don't know if I trust this. Like, it's probably true because our data is pretty good here. Like, FinHub's really good. But this looks like it's a one-time thing to cash flow. So without that, what is 87 multiplied by 4? Probably 400. No, 348. Okay. Okay. 348, 644, wait, zero, yeah, divided by 348, oops, oops, oh my goodness, 6440 divided by 348, so it's price to FFO, excluding that massive spike, is actually about 18.5, so it's a little bit more expensive than Steg, if we take out that outlier quarter. Let's see if the dividends have been growing faster, though. Yeah, okay. So this company is like actually growing its dividends. And the dividend has grown by almost 4x over the past eight years. That's that's much better than Stag. And you can actually see here that if you were buying the stock back in 2010, you now got like a 27% dividend yield on cost. Even back in 2013, now a 7.7% .7 dividend yield on cost. So it's a little bit more expensive than Stag. It's actually growing its dividend, though. The dividend per share isn't as high, though, but the financials look pretty similar. Um, no insider buying, high insight score. I'm going to leave this one on the watch list. This is FR. I'm going to say, looks interesting. Growing the dividend. Hmm. Here's what I'll do. Looks interesting. Growing the dividend. It's the FFO of 18. Low dividend yield, though. 
and revenue. But again, this stock does not beat NSA. NSA is the best stock so far, in my opinion. What just happened? Okay. EGP. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Okay, so EGP, East Group Properties. All right. So this stock looks like it's been around since 2000. And it since 2000, it's up 700%. And the SPY is up 150%. So it's, it's outperformed the SPY by like 5x. If we go to the dividends over the past 20 years, what does that look like? Including the dividends, this stock is up 1,000% over the past 22 years. So very, very strong growth. That is very nice to see. Dividend is 3.2%. FFO yield is 4.27%. Price to FFO is 24. So this is a more expensive REIT right now. It looks like there is a lot of demand for this stock. Um, Revenue is growing. What does it do? Mississippi currently has 82 employees, acquisition, industrial properties. So it's another industrial REIT like STAG and like FR. So if we go to our financials. Okay, so revenue didn't really grow from 2008 to 2011. And then from 2012, revenue's really been growing again, like quite a bit. Like, take a look at that trailing 12 months revenue growth. Oh, my goodness, man. Another one where basically every single quarter the revenue grows. That is very nice to see. Operating cash flow since about 2012-ish. It's been growing. Not as consistently as the revenue, but it's still been growing. So that's interesting to see. What are insiders doing? An insider bought 100K worth on June 8th. Okay. What are the dividends? It looks like they cut their dividend a little bit here in 2018, but brought it back. And now it's growing quite substantially again. The five-year dividend growth is 11%. Interesting. Dividend yield on cost, quite high. Interesting. Okay. So this one looks awesome the fundamentals look awesome but the price is quite high like basically now i'm comparing everything to nsa nsa looks like it's basically you know the fundamentals are the same revenues growing operating cash flows growing dividends growing very nicely um dividends actually growing ridiculously nicely and it's trading for a price to ffo of only 13 with an ffo yield of about seven percent so and a higher dividend so this stock does look like it has very strong fundamentals, but the dividend yield is lower and the price to FFO is much higher. So I'm going to leave it on the watch list, but um, again, I don't think that it beat NSA. Which one was that too? That was, where was it? It was EGP, right? Yeah. Growing nicely, very strong fundamentals and fundamental growth, but not better than NSA, in my opinion. And more expensive. Okay, cube. I actually should check some NSA Yahoo says earnings tomorrow. Really? Okay. Yeah, that would be interesting to watch. I think one of the regional managers at NSA retired or stepped down recently. Can't remember the details, but that was one thing I felt uncertain about with NSA. Still, that re looks amazing. Um, Yeah, Lincoln. NSA looks pretty incredible. Like the fundamentals are incredible. The price looks great and the dividend yield looks very nice. So definitely one to watch. Okay. How's our watch list looking right now, by the way? 
We still have 24 stocks on it. Dang. Okay. I might have to be more picky. <clears throat> All right, the next one here is Cube. Let's compare this to the SPY. So it has not beat the SPY since 2004, but over the past decade has beat the SPY. Pays a dividend of 4% right now. Price to FFO 18, FFO yield of 5.5%. So the FFO covers the dividend. Nice. Price to FFO doesn't look crazy right now either. It's a very high insight score too at 4.36. Revenue's growing. What does Cube do? Cube Smart operates as a self-managed and self-administered self-administered real estate investment trust with operations solely through Cube Smart LP, located in Pennsylvania. Self-storage properties. Okay, so another self-storage rate, which is probably why the price is higher. And I imagine it's going to be growing super, super strong. So revenue has grown, what is that? About 20% year over year operating cash flow. Is it 516 million? What are the dividends like? Looks like a pretty strong stock too, honestly. Dividends have been growing. Insiders, the CEO sold some shares in 2018. There's been no insider selling over the past year, though, but also no insider buying. Um, It looks interesting. I'm going to leave it on the watch list. It's been outperforming the SPY. It's another self-storage REIT. It's more expensive than NSA. It looks like it might not be growing fundamentals as nicely as NSA, but it is interesting. So I will add some notes. Another self storage REIT, more expensive than NSA, growing the dividend nicely, fundamentals also growing nicely. Cool. It's another strong REIT right there, for sure. Okay, so I think we've gone through more than half of the list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the link to the swatch list. And I'm going to put it in the comments of this video. Oh my goodness, I wasn't sharing my screen again. It's tough to remember, okay, when you're going back and forth. I'm sorry. Um, it's been an hour and seven minutes, though. We've gone through about half of that watch list. So far, I think the best stock, the best REIT that I've been able to find is NSA. Um, sorry, my cat wants to come hang out. We got Tuna hanging out with us now. But yeah, I think NSA was the most attractive REIT so far on the watch list. I'm going to just share my screen once again here really quick. Um, yeah, right here. Interestingly enough, I think it's also the stock. Yeah, it's also the stock with the highest stock unlock insights score. So I find that pretty interesting. It means our, our insight scores, you know, seem like they work, right? It's got the highest insight score. It is an incredible company, very high dividend, dividends growing. Its price is not insane right now. Fundamentals are strong. They're very solid. And the price, again, the price is just not insane. So I'm going to share this watch list with everyone. I'm going to copy the link. I'll put it in the description. I'll also pin a comment to this video. And you guys can come and check out this watch list. And I'll continue going through it and removing any stocks that I don't think are that high quality. But, and I'm also, sorry, and I'm also adding some notes right here, just some quick notes on things to watch. And yeah, this is the list. Again, I used Stock Unlocks Screener right here, and I went through 800 REITs. I, yeah, it took a long time. It was fun though, I enjoy doing it. And this watch list right here is in my opinion, the best REITs from this entire list of over 800 REITs. So this is literally like quite literally the best of the best, and I'm filtering them out because I want to find the best REITs on the stock market while real estate is in this um, massive correction this year.
because I think it could be a great time to pick up some fundamentally sound REITs. And again, so far, NSA, in my opinion, does look like it is um, the most fundamentally sound. So, yeah. JNR asks, how much would you increase your margin of safety for a small cap REIT compared to a, um, a big cap or a big market cap? It's interesting you ask this because last night when I was going through this watch list and I was, you know, doing my initial research and like finding all these stocks, I naturally did want a higher FFO yield if the company was a smaller cap. Now, how much more do I want? It kind of depends on the situation, but I mean, I've been burned by a few small caps. I still, I love small caps. I've also, you know, had some of my best wins on small cap stocks, but yeah, I definitely think, in my opinion, an extra margin of safety on small caps would be nice. How much? Again, I think it depends on the situation. I'm actually going to share my screen once more. Let's go to the watch list because there was a small market cap here that I decided to leave on, which was global self-storage right here. It's got that dividend. It's got a nice FFO yield of 7.8%, basically 8%, right? And the financials, you know, have been growing quite nicely. It's actually been growing very nicely. And this is another self-storage REIT. Its price to FFO is actually below NSA. Sorry, NSA. I don't know if the fundamentals are stronger than NSA, though. I would be inclined to say no. But the price is slightly cheaper. But I don't know if that's as much of a price difference to, you know, buy this small cap, in my opinion, versus NSA. But it does have a very nice... FFO yield and a very low price to FFO for the industry it's in and for, you know, the, the underlying fundamental growth, in my opinion. Adrian, yes, this video is just taking a look at REITs. We went through an entire watch list that I built and we're trying to find the best REITs. So that's what this video is de dedicated to. But yeah, I've been recording now for an hour and 10 minutes. This was basic. It was really fun for me. I I love researching stocks. I went through basically half of that watch list. I don't know if I'll record the other half. Let me know if you guys want me to record the other half and go live and analyze the other half at another time. But um, yeah. And also let me know if you guys enjoy this live research live streams. I this is my first time ever doing it. I've never done it before. I don't think I've ever seen another YouTube channel do it. But I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna research these stocks for like an hour today. And um, I may as well just live stream it and share my thoughts and talk to everyone. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed this type of live stream and I can continue doing them in the future. And let me know if you want me to finish off the watch list in another live stream. But I'm going to go enjoy some dinner. I'm going to go hang out with Tuna because he's needing my attention. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. I truly do appreciate <laughs> Thank you, Joel. That's awesome. I love the live stream analysis too. So thank you guys so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. And make sure you join our live stream on Saturday, 1130 a.m. Eastern. That is a scheduled live stream every single week. And um, you can guarantee that we're going to be there. So yeah, come join the Saturday live stream. Thank you guys again so much for watching. And I will see you all again, um, hopefully on Saturday. Take care, everyone.